Okay, I had a question, a real estate question of the week, and I thought I'd mention it on this show because if it's one person's question, I'm sure it's a few others as well. So this was regarding land assembly versus strata windups. Ah, okay. Yes. So there is a difference. Land assembly is when you assemble more than one parcel of land together to create an assembly of properties to sell to a developer who can give a better use of the land. And once they uh, combine all the land, they then don't have any lot lines and the setbacks aren't as – they just opens up their world of what they can actually develop on the land. So land assembly, again, is the assembly of different parcels of land, where strata wind up, where strata wants to sell to a developer is different because there are, let's say there's 85 units to, to a strata. The 85 units should do a wind up of the strata, creating then one uh, title, let's say, it creates so that there's not 85 contracts happening with uh, contract to purchase and sales. It's just one. And, you know, with, with the strata wind-ups, uh, wind there are 80% of the owners need to approve that uh, sale. So as long as 80% of the owners in a strata say, yes, we are interested and we want to sell to a developer, the other 20%, unfortunately for them, if they don't want to do it, will have to do it. Uh, and the way it works is obviously a realtor has to be hired to make sure that the best use and the best price point and to market to the de- right developers and get the right offer going on. And the lawyer has to be hired to do the wind up. And then when an offer is is presented to the strata, which they would like to entertain, it goes to the courts for approval, and the judge makes sure that they are getting the best uh, terms and conditions, and it's fair and honest for all owners. So uh, that is a strata wind-up. Okay, now we know the difference. (laughs) So, okay, so I wanted to mention, because I had um, a few, uh, I I went to a VIP event a week and a half, two weeks ago or so for realtors. I mentioned it before on the show, but I wanted to really um, specify, you know, transit is one of the biggest real estate boosters there is uh, for uh, prices, uh, for equity uh, buildup, for uh, sales. So uh, when you think of an area, a neighborhood, a town getting um, an amazing amazing transit opportunity coming their way that's a bit of a you know you're speculating if it isn't approved yet but you're saying hey this is a great place to invest and buy now for the future because the transit's coming now i'm saying this this way because langley is one of those hot spots the sky train is coming to langley it it, it is directed to go from the surrey area to Langley at 203rd, and there are some pre-construction developments that uh, have had some realtor VIP uh, releases, and they're starting to do pre-sales. So this is a great opportunity for for somebody who wants to invest something. Maybe they just have a a, a, a 15%, 10%, uh, 20% to put down right now, uh, but they're really they're speculating for the future for the growth of that, buying it at today's prices for tomorrow's gain. And then uh, you know when the transit's coming, and you know there's an ETA I've heard of probably around 2025. They've already started the process. Uh, but it does take some time. It could take longer than that. But it, it, it's coming to, to, to up to 203rd in, in Langley, and it's bound to. They've been talking about this for a while, and I do have some inside um, insiders that have told me uh, what's happening way before it, 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 it was really official. But uh, that is a good place, a great place to invest in some pre-construction uh, condos, townhouses, or what have you. Absolutely. And I mean, it is, yeah, that's an area that's just going to keep building up. Absolutely. Uh, the heartbeat, you know, of the whole area. Uh, great. Uh, Langley is where I moved to uh, when I first came to Canada in 1998. Do you remember 1998, Curtis? I don't remember last week. <laughs> You're asking what 1998? Yes, I do remember 1998. That was when I was, uh, I was starting broadcast school. Oh, how cool is that? Oh, how time flies. <laughs> it does. 
So a, a little bit of tidbit information, too, before we go on break. You know, did you know about half of homes sold in July for still over asking? Just about. So, you know, people have been saying, you know, if you look at the stats last week, we showed, you know, it's like a ladder coming down just a little bit, but still a seller's market. And prices really haven't come down much, but they're kind of across the board and they're just, you know, a little bit. It's, you know, pe- just 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 so everyone knows, you know, um, about half of properties still sold for over asking, so still seller's market. No, absolutely. I mean, I keep, uh, you know, I know that we, you, know, you just mentioned last week that we had like a, a low in inventory, and that's got to keep prices still pretty much around asking, depending on what people are asking, right? Since 1981, the lowest listings we've had. Yeah, so 40 years, but again, it all comes down to being smart about how you uh, list it, because if you go way too high, then obviously you're not going to get over asking, right? Exactly. You do have to price smart. Absolutely. And that's where a professional realtor comes in handy. So important. Uh, <laughs> you know what? It's so true. <laughs> yeah, no, I know like when we were trying to price our house, when we were selling ours with you, I mean, that was, it, it's a bit of a stressful situation sometimes. You're like, oh, I don't want to ask for too much, but I don't want to go too low and then have somebody just come in and see, oh, right, give me that. And I, and I don't want to leave money on the table. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of money changing hands. So it can be a little, really uh, in, in stressful and you have to put a lot of thought into it. Oh, absolutely. And then you balance it with how quickly do you have to sell and what does the real estate market look like? How is it going to change possibly, you know, in the near future? How long do you want to be on the market? Uh, you know, where are you going to? And and timing of everything. So there's so many aspects to pricing your property uh, to get the highest price possible in the least amount of time with the smoothest transaction, dates, everything. And that's where you break out your algebra and you go A plus B times C equals D times F equals G equals, and and you lost me at A plus B because I can't do algebra. Algebra. (laughs) (laughs) I can do math. You throw it, you throw it, letters are for spelling. You throw that into the equation for math and I just, I might as well go back to grade eight summer school. You were pretty good at math. You still are pretty good at math. I'm good with numbers, but yes, my are. mind, something in my mind does not click when you throw a letter in there because my mind goes, that doesn't belong. Yeah, it's, it's just not right. <laughs> and uh, that's always been a problem for me, hence why I went to summer school for grade eight. <clears throat> Oh, summer school. <laughs> yeah, summer school for grade 8 math. What a, what fun that was. I got an A in summer school grade 8 math because that was the only thing I had to concentrate on, but it still was not fun getting up at 8 o'clock every day for part of the summer to go to school again. Oh, come on. <laughs> I, I learned a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully it stuck. <laughs> it did. Now, speaking of learning something, obviously people can learn from you about real estate if they have any kind of questions at all. Where do they need to go to get information about you? michellecummins.ca. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back after these words.